New details tonight about what's next for CASA, an organization dedicated to helping victims of domestic violence. This week, the State Law Enforcement Division began looking into CASA for misuse of grant money. Well, now WMBF News reporter Ashley Taylor. Governor Nikki Haley is adding her voice to the call for you to be ready for hurricane season. Today, she traveled down the South Carolina coast to emphasize changes to evacuation plans this year. We have some information just into the WMBF newsroom tonight. South Carolina Highway Patrol just sent out an alert about dangerous driving conditions. They say that these storms have knocked down trees across several highways in our area. And also thousands are without power right now in Florence and Darlington counties. And Santee Cooper now reports about 500 people without power in Myrtle Beach and Conway. That, of course, in addition to the outages we reported earlier in the newscast. And we'll be right back here tracking those dangerous conditions. Good evening, everyone. We'll get you right back to golf in just a moment, but we'll and we'll continue to follow this breaking news involving the wildfire in Horry County. The Forest Brook and Carolina Forest areas are being affected in certain ways from that wildfire. We'll get you back to golf, and we'll have an update in about 30 minutes. Can we just go back to that hit at the Pelican Stadium? I was like, oh, great for those fans out there. Somebody's <laughs> going to catch that. It cleared, yeah. it cleared the fans out I there. I was looking for it as I'm, as I'm rolling. Good height distance way out there. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joe. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Oh, yeah. You guys have seen it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys have seen it? Maybe not. Okay, I don't know. Well, let's check out the weather. Yeah, from Robinson County. I've visited the <laughs> campus a few times over the years, and I mean, it certainly has really grown. Here in Myrtle Beach, there are no people allowed in the water. The same is true for keeping an eye on this fire as it heads toward Highway 90, but at this point, not threatening any homes. Here at Kane Elementary School, you can see a nearly straight line of debris where the tornado came through, and this straight line leads directly over to a house just yards from here, and today I talked with the family who lives there. Well, here along the Highway 17 by past the speed limit drops to 45 miles per hour here near the back gate but using our radar gun you can see that not everyone is paying attention to that speed limit, 53 miles per hour there. Well, now we've learned that the Highway Patrol has a team of troopers that will be working to slow down drivers. So I go through here all the time, constantly. Jessica Stirrett lives near the back gate intersection in Myrtle Beach, so she's noticed what's changed and what hasn't because of the construction so far. Um, they lowered the speed limit to 45, but I don't think people really care. I think they even go faster than the original 55 sometimes. Driver Wayne Mayo admits he may be part of the problem. The construction, I hadn't really paid much attention to it. I thought that it was just 45 right here at this intersection, but once you got past it, it was 55. Starrett would like to see more people paying attention to the speed limit. And this construction zone is now on a list of areas that's getting special attention from the Highway Patrol. We have a, a team of troopers who are assigned specifically to work, uh, work zones around the state, and we have one of those teams right here in the PD in the Grand Strand. We saw some of those troopers at work today, and drivers say it does make them slow down. It definitely does, uh, and I've noticed that they've been out like a lot too, just more than one on this road probably. It definitely gets my attention, you know what I mean? Obviously they're trying to say something and trying to tell people to slow down. This visible trooper presence comes just in time for this project's first lane closures. People are going to have to be careful, so maybe if they see him out there, maybe they'll start being careful. While this construction project is relatively new, the Highway Patrol troopers will be monitoring this area throughout the three-year construction. They'll just add it to their list of other places to monitor, like the construction along Highway 378. We're putting along the Highway 17 bypass the back gate intersection in Myrtle Beach. I'm Brandon Herring, WMBF News. Yeah, Michael, I just got off the phone with Horry County Police Sergeant Robert Kegler. He tells me all six of those suspects are students here at Carolina Forest High School. Four of them are juveniles. Two of them are of adult age. Now, he tells me that police were called out here this morning to investigate that bomb threat here at Carolina Forest High. They did not find any explosives, but they are taking that threat and more than a dozen others this year very seriously. And my heart is it's still going. <laughs> Nikki Haley was still worked up even several minutes after hearing about a bomb threat at Carolina Forest High School. She has a sister in 11th grade there. My immediate reaction was, is she okay? Is everyone else okay? Because I take it seriously at all times. The threat came from a note saying a bomb would go off around 1045 this morning. The school was evacuated and searched and students returned to class by 1130. He texts me, uh, mom, come pick me up. There's a bomb threat. When Marcy Duhon heard about the threat, she did not rush to the school, though, and said 
she called to check on the situation and her students would be returning to class. So obviously there are different reactions to the threats lately, especially since there have been a lot at Horry County schools since November. And five altogether over at St. James High School, two at St. James Middle, one at Blackwater, two at Forest Brook, one at Sockesty and one here today. There have been a few more in Myrtle Beach too. Duhon figures the threats are pranks and she has an idea on how to fix it. I think they should have cameras so they can figure out who's doing this. Other parents say they'd like to see the students forced to make up the missed time like snow days. Horry County Police Sergeant Robert Kegler says a television spot that could begin airing next week will target students in hopes of cutting down on future threats and he says the threats will always be fully investigated. We are dedicated to not getting complacent on any of these calls. And it was actually surveillance video from inside the school today that helped police make the arrest. They say they looked at that video, then they did some investigation of their own, talked to some students, and by the end of the day, more or less, they were able to make those arrests late this afternoon. We just got word a few moments before this broadcast. In fact, we are told that four of those st uh, students are now in the Department of Juvenile Justice. The other two have been taken to J. Reuben Long. We'll find out more about their charges tomorrow. For now, I'm live at Carolina Forest High School, Brandon Harris. Well, Laura, the race is still going on right here behind me at Darlington Raceway. And you know, there's always a lot of excitement out here, and the fans have been here enjoying that. And earlier today, I called up with some who were doing just that, enjoying the race at a place we rarely get to see, the infield. It's the only place to be. I've lived here all my life, and I've sat in the stands, and then when you come in here, it's a total different experience. Joanne Curtis has been enjoying the Darlington race on the infield with her family and friends for 30 years. She says setting up an RV combines the comforts of home with the atmosphere of the race, and that comes with lots of perks. You get to hang out with all your family and friends. Yep. You don't have to stand in line to use a bathroom. <laughs> we get to bring as many coolers as we want. We get to mix Food cocktails friends. anytime. Mm -hmm. Eat as much food as you want. Be shaded from the heat. I like Clemson football games and this is a lot like it because everybody just gets so into it and they're so excited to be here. And when you're already on the infield, you don't have to leave anything to get to the track. It's also probably the only place you'll find guys building a PVC pipe platform to watch the race. Clearly one advantage to being on the infield is having a view like you won't get anywhere else at the track. We got turn three and four right here, but we're hoping that we can see a little bit, you know, on the sides and the back turns. For some, that uncertainty about the view is the only infield drawback. It's hard to see in here, but it's party. you party here and watch the race in the stands. But for others, it's the best of both worlds. We're right in the thick of it. We're right in the center of the action, so this is the place to be. And when it's all over, Curtis makes sure the fun isn't spoiled. We take care of all the people and make sure they can get home or spend the night. And uh, we want safety as priority, you know, for the family. Now back out here live as the race continues. If you're wondering what it takes to get onto the infield at Darlington, it's almost as easy as just reserving a ticket, but space is limited because people can hold their spaces from year to year. Reporting live at the Darlington Raceway in Darlington, I'm Brandon Herring. WMBF News. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight for WMBF News at 11. I'm Brandon Herring. One person has died after a train crashed into an ATV in the PD today. Captain Mike Nunn with the Florence County Sheriff's Office says it happened at about 3.45 this afternoon. At Deputy Coroner Don Reynolds says he'll release the name of the victim once all family is notified and we'll have that information on WMBF News today starting at 5 a.m. Well, an important reminder tonight for anyone who uses the internet at home. The FBI is warning all computer owners to check for a type of malware called DNS Changer. WMBF News reporter Erica Gonzalez has more on the virus and what could happen tomorrow morning if your PC is infected. News. Thanks, Erica. And now for our first look at the weather tonight. Storm Team meteorologist Jessica Ryan is keeping an eye on a possible cool down this week. Jessica? Okay, look forward to more on that, Jessica. Well, firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked an early morning fire that forced an evacuation at a Grand Strand condo building. Nearly 60 people were evacuated from the coastal dunes. Well, officials say the use of green lasers are back on the rise in the Grand Strand this season, and that's putting people's safety at risk. WMBF News reporter Ashley Taylor is live in the studio with concerns and the strict penalties people could face for not using the small devices properly. Well, a triple homicide investigation has kept officers in North Carolina busy this weekend. We'll tell you why they were back at the crime scene today after the break.